Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is May 23rd, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. The Food and Drug Administration has approved oral sex underwear to prevent STIs, and it definitely sounds like a treat. The single-use latex underwear are called laurels, and they retail for around $25 for a package of four. Laurels was approved by the FDA after proving that the underwear was an improvement on the concept of a dental dam, which nobody used. <laughs> For adventurous couples looking to add a little giggle during sexy time, the laurels sounds like fun. In other news, Pakistan Minister Shireen Mazari, who served under former Prime Minister Imran Khan, was arrested by police near her Islamabad home on Friday. Shireen, the senior leader in Khan's party was arrested supposedly because of a land dispute debating back to 1972. Yet her followers believe the arrest was politically motivated. Shireen has been openly critical of the new administration ever since PM Khan, has, who has led the South Asian country of 220 million, million people, was ousted abruptly. After she was released, Shireen tweeted that her mobile phone was taken and her driver was beaten and blindfolded. After learning of Shireen's arrest, the ousted Prime Minister Khan described the new administration as a fascist regime. In other news, a woman in Texas was convicted for allowing a 13-year-old girl to endure sexual abuse by a 47-year-old man as a part of her beliefs. Cherry Payton was convicted of allowing her daughter to marry a man under the Hebrew Israelite faith. Police also arrested the daughter's husband, Stephen Cardi, he was charged with aggravated sexual assault of a child. Both Peyton and Cardi will be required to register as sex offenders for the remainder of their lives. Is religion used as a weapon against women? Let's chat with Zakia Akarel today. Zakia is an author and former religious studies professor who's taught courses on women and religion and African and African-American religious traditions. Welcome to the Feisty Zakia. What happened here? Is there a basis for child abuse being upheld by religion? Well, thank you to Erica for having me on the show. Um, yes, definitely we, uh, women have used uh, religion as their, you know, their guidance for several generations. Um, and throughout that, unfortunately, there are sacred texts and beliefs that are not very favorable to women. Um, one of that is through the looking at the Bible as a reference for how and when a girl or a woman should get married and the rules and regulations um, about that. And biblically, there is no minimum age requirement for marriage. So it was not uncommon um, for during the time that the Bible was written over the several centuries, it was not uncommon for young girls who had reached puberty to be considered marriageable age. So this mother who uh, claims to be a Hebrew Israelite, and let's be clear, not all Hebrew Israelites have the same belief systems, but they, many of them do hold the Bible, particularly uh, what is considered to Christians Old Testament scripture or Jewish scripture. They hold that to be sacred. And you will see throughout Deuteronomy, Numbers, Old Testament law that says that girls and women can be seen as property of their, of their parents, particularly their father, and then that of their husband. And once they reach peace, puberty, it's pretty much okay for them to be married. So with this woman um, being a part of a tradition that holds that text to be sacred, she felt like she was justified to have her daughter marry an older man. And of course, this is a problem, right? We, we look historically that within this cultural context, there's nothing wrong there amongst those people, but it's definitely problematic. Uh, one, because a child is not of age to consent to be married, she, she is not matured enough um, and doesn't have the right decision-making skills to be okay with marriage. So anything that uh, a child is doing within a marriage is, is going to be uh, because the adult in their life has probably brainwashed them. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this young lady had been brainwashed both by her mother within this religious tradition 
as well as the husband, um, it is completely reprehensible to think that a child is old enough to consent and to be um, able to be married. But this isn't the 1700s, it's 2022. We know that little girls don't have the mental capacity to consent to be wise. Are women actually choosing religion over the safety of their daughters? Unfortunately, women, you will see all over the world, and particularly within African-American religious traditions, we are the pillars of these uh, religious traditions, right? We uphold them. We are the teachers of our children, and we actually facilitate the continued growth and adherence within these traditions. So unfortunately, um, even though these rules and regulations, by, you know, founded within religion may be damaging to women, it is women often who perpetuate these damaging rules and regulations. Thank you, Zakia, for sharing wisdom with us. We women have to stop seeking approval from men, blindly grasping at religious tradition and hurting our daughters in the process. We must protect our daughters, especially when they are facing abuse that we know all too well. Promise yourself that the abuse ends with you. It's time for a break. Is it possible to be the perfect mom? Why would a man allow a woman who broke his heart 40 years ago to come back? Answer to these questions right after the break. Be right back. My name is Shivangani and I am the CEO and founder of Feather and Bone. Feather and Bone is a skincare company for mama and baby. Our products only have three pure, safe, and gentle ingredients straight from Mother Earth. Our formulations are inspired by Indian Ayurvedic traditions. My journey started when I was 12 years old after I had a terrible reaction to a store-bought face wash. I really struggled to find something clean and pure for my face. I experienced something similar during my pregnancy and also when I was trying to find clean, pure and safe products for my son. Unable to find something, I created my own line and it did super well. In fact, our face wash is the first ever face wash tablet that has won Best Cleanser a few times. It is my mission to help other mums to make life easy. And so if you're looking for safe, pure, natural ingredient products that are straight from the first mother herself, Mother Earth, then Feather and Bone products are for you. I want to help all of us feel skin confident. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? We're living the feisty life and sometimes it means making drastic realizations that will change our lives forever. I want you to meet Jenna. Jenna is an author, entrepreneur, and mom who found herself failing at one of her most prideful accomplishments. What she did to overcome her failure will surprise you. Jenna, what did you decide that helped turn your failure into a great success? Hi, my name is Jenna Banks and I am done with mom guilt. Let me tell you a story about my journey to getting there. My son had turned 21. I was really excited for him. I got him a ticket to this concert called Coachella. It was $500. I was so excited for him to go. It was a big, big birthday. He goes and he ends up doing some drugs. I, he, he had never told me he'd ever done drugs before. So that was the last thing I expected. He's on the on his way back home, okay? And I call him, I'm so excited to talk to him and hear about how his experience was. Come to find out, he just didn't sound like himself and he sounded a little bit like incoherent and I could tell he probably did some drugs. So I asked him point blank and he admitted to doing molly and mushrooms. And of course I was quite upset about it, but I figured I'd deal with it later and just let him come down because he was not his normal self at that time. So he ends up coming home, days pass. As I'm talking to him on the phone, he's not getting better. In fact, he's getting worse. Mom panic starts to kick in. I get his dad on the phone. I had just moved to Atlanta, Georgia, all the way across the US from California. I call his dad who's still in LA and I'm like, please take him to the hospital. There's something wrong. He takes him. They can't figure out anything out. 
I have him take him to some doctors to do blood work, nothing. So I drop everything. I had just moved across the country. I'm panicking at this point. I hop on a plane. I go to California. I'm trying to get him help, but he doesn't seem to improve. And so I'm spending time getting him to college, getting him to his classes. I have to get back to my business. I fly back to Atlanta. Long story short, it didn't get better. In fact, it got worse. And all this mom guilt was plaguing me, right? Because I had worked so hard. I had so much of my identity wrapped up in how my son turned out, right? Like we want our kids to have the best life. And I had gotten him into, I'd helped him get to a great college. He was the youngest camera operator that this helicopter company had ever hired. He got that job at the age of 19. His career path looks amazing. And now I'm thinking, oh my God, is all this going to fade away? The mom guilt had such a grip on me. Over time, come to find out, he ended up getting diagnosed with psychosis. He stopped taking care of his hygiene. And of course, I wanted to start self-sacrificing to get him back to this place of where I had in my mind pictured I wanted him to be. Like his life was my responsibility and now it's my responsibility to get him back on his feet. But what was happening was I found that this mom guilt, this self-sacrificing behavior was causing me to suffer, my life to suffer. My business started suffering. I was in a depression for months. I was in a funk. All my relationships suffered. I didn't want to go anywhere or do anything. And so I, one day, it hit me. I was like, this situation is taking both of us down and I have the, I have my life to live. I have a great life ahead of me and I need to get back to living my life. And so I had to kind of let that go to the universe, help get him as much help as I could. But ultimately he ended up getting on food stamps, California state health insurance, disability. And you know what, as a mom, I chose not to feel guilty about that because his life is not a reflection of me. These are his choices. This was his life path and I had to do what was best for me and still live my own best life. And guess what? Our relationship is amazing. We still have a really good bond as a mother and son, but I don't have my identity wrapped up in how he turned out anymore. And that became a really loving place to have a great relationship with him. As a result of letting go of the mom guilt, I was able to flourish in my business, flourish as an individual, grow my relationship, spend time with other people again, be happy, live my best life. I not only flourished in my business, I sold that company a few years later for half a million dollars. Now I'm the author of the book, I Love Me More, How to Find Happiness and Success Through Self-Love. I'm speaking, I'm helping other women understand that mom guilt does not need to have a grip on us, that we need to love ourselves. It's our duty to love ourselves and make ourselves a priority, even when we're moms. I love it, Jenna. Go out and let every mom know to release the mom guilt and get on with their lives. Wow. In other news, we have another viral dilemma. A man wrote into The Guardian to share, 40 years ago, as I was leaving school and starting university, I had an all-consuming relationship with a young woman. She ended in a long, drawn-out way, which left me a wreck. I had a breakdown, which nobody acknowledged. I've been in and out of therapy with depression for decades. 30 years ago, I met the woman who I'm now married to. We've been together very happily and have two wonderful children. She is a great mother. A year ago, my lost love made contact, which prompted an immense crisis for me. I have maintained contact, but we've not met up. However, this has allowed me, with the help from my therapist, to deal with the 40-year-old issues, and I'm now in a much happier place. My wife, on the other hand, is convinced she is second best. I promise to let her know whenever there is contact by text or email, which I have done, although every instance is difficult. She is upset by any contact and I feel she is spying on me. I rarely initiate the contact myself. My older lover has shown no inclination to take things any further. She's single and she doesn't want to be seen as a seductress. I want to maintain friendship. She's the only person I still know from that period of my life. Dealing with past trauma and forming a new, a new relationship with her has been extremely good for me but my wife's reactions are unbearable. If I broke things off, I will once again lose someone I'm still fond of. Hmm. So let me get this right. 
by your own admission, a woman who broke your heart 40 years ago just walked back into your life while you're married and you describe her as a lost love. After 40 years of being depressed over the emotional pain, she caused you, a grown man, described this childish heartbreak as love. Okay. This first chance at love taught you to confuse pain with love and you've not had the wisdom to understand the difference and move forward. Your therapist gives you advice. The lost love gives you her perspective and you're confused because your current wife, the woman who opted to stand beside you in life for 30 years is hurting. Wow, I'm so sad. Not for you, but for the woman who chose to be your wife. She chose a man who does not know how to think for himself and allows strangers to offer their opinions so that he can be influenced by them. She chose a man who confuses emotional pain with love which completely invalidates the love she's actually shown you. You don't really know what love is. Your wife is love. A woman who values herself and respects you would never do anything to bring harm to the good life you've created for yourself, even if bringing harm would make her happy. If this friend or lost love truly cared about you, she would protect you from harm and not cause it. The fact that she's willing to have private conversations with you, knowing full well it could damage the good life you've created without her, shows she is ready and willing to hurt you all over again. And you entertaining her showing that you want to be hurt again. That's not lost love, it's delayed pain. You're going to get more of the emotional pain you've attached yourself to for 40 years because it seems that you like it. There's nothing wrong with being an emotional masochist. If you like having people around who reject you and hurt your feelings, accept it. But love your wife enough to let her go so that she doesn't end up a victim of the abuse that you're deciding to bring back into your life. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty.